And uh, 45% is supposed to be borrowed domestically, Mr. Speaker. I've always held the view that uh, domestic borrowing in whichever form, Mr. Speaker, as long as it goes to the ages of 25% uh, and above, Mr. Speaker, it then brings the idea of crowding out, Mr. Speaker, where the government will be borrowing more at an advantage of businesses that are locally in the country than uh, you know, the businesses will be able to borrow in a commercial setting where commercial banks will find it more lucrative for them to be able to make quicker money and more stable uh, give more stable loans to the government than the old ordinary to businesses, Mr. Speaker. I, I, I can attest to this, Mr. Speaker, in the sense that even the lower part of the pyramid, Mr. Speaker, that uh, this current government has wanted to focus on uh, in the narrative of ASLA, the ASLA nation, Mr. Speaker. If you remember last year, the Central Bank did uh, give a report on the MSMEs landscape. This will be the micro businesses that we have in this country, small medium uh, enterprises that we have in this country, Mr. Speaker. And the challenge that we had uh, in the entire last year, and I think it's a challenge that, that, that we're still going to face in this year, is that small and medium enterprises, for every money they borrow, about 10 shillings that they borrow, six shillings, they end up defaulting. And why are they defaulting? It's because the capacity that they have in terms of being able to run a business is not there. Uh, and, 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 and therefore, banks will be dissuaded even more when they realize that these small and medium enterprises cannot be able to borrow uh, more predictably, and therefore they just become unbankable. So, Mr. Speaker, this is something that, uh, as a country, we must start think, thinking about how do we ensure that before even we get to the domestic borrowing and external borrowing conversations, we can be able to shrink and shrink and shrink the physical deficit in this country, Mr. Speaker. And some of these areas, Mr. Speaker, that I talked about very passionately about was which are the areas that are enticing capital for government to spend in, Mr. Speaker. I have held the view very strongly that if we are borrowing money, Mr. Speaker, and that money does not go to development, for instance, right now, we are ranging between 65 and 68 percent of our national budget going on recurrent budgets, whereby we are just financing a, a, a budget that, uh, that is, not, is not a development budget, Mr. Speaker. Um, if we continue borrowing as a country to be able to eat, to be able to buy Panadol for workforce, to be able to just consume, Mr. Speaker, we end up being in trouble. Another thing I wanted to say, Mr. Speaker, as I submit on this, is that I have been sitting in the committee of uh, CIPIC, that is a County Public Investment uh, and Special Funds Committee, Mr. Speaker. And in that committee, we have been able to observe a serious problem with regards to pending bills and with regards to consumptions that mirror the national level, Mr. Speaker. In fact, counties are facing a situation by, whereby if they don't learn from the conversations that we are having in this house on debt management strategy, Mr. Speaker, our counties are going to reach a point whereby the pending bills are going to be more in terms of nominal value than the equitable shares that they are getting, Mr. Speaker. We are going to wake up one day where our counties are going to find themselves with a lot of contract pressure from suppliers that need their money paid because these suppliers that are in counties, Mr. Speaker, they come on the basis of a contract. And if there's one thing that the Constitution of Kenya protects and our laws protect is contracts to investors, contracts to suppliers, and contracts to anybody who end up getting into a dealing with any form of government, whether national government or county government, Mr. Speaker. And from where we are, we are, we are, we are seeing ourselves heading as a country, Mr. Speaker, the counties must start learning from this MTDS conversation in the, in the Senate and in Parliament in general, because counties are facing a serious challenge in terms of their own phys uh, physical consolidation, Mr. Speaker. Uh, to, just to give you a perspective, Mr. Speaker, if you look at where the counties are spending currently, like on domestic travel uh, and subsistence, Mr. Speaker, on such things as hospitality, 
um, uh, expenditure in counties, Mr. Speaker, these areas are, are, are gobbling a lot of money from counties to the extent that the expenditure in some of these areas could be used to be able to pay some of the pending bills. And we know, Mr. Speaker, that in the national government, as we try to raise money, the ordinary revenue, as we try to raise money uh, from different uh, euro bonds and as we, as we try to raise money even from grants from external sources, Mr. Speaker, the first charge for the government has been always nationally paying for this debt. In fact, I remember last year, Mr. Speaker, there were some weeks that the national government was paying a whooping 100 billion per week in, in, in debt. Now, our counties are going to start facing a situation whereby they are going to start paying the first charge of their money to suppliers in terms of pending business, Mr. Speaker. And rightfully so, because if we do not have counties and national government paying our suppliers, Mr. Speaker, the common people in this country who are working day and night to be able to supply uh, goods and services to our government, Mr. Speaker, we are killing this economy. We are killing it because without being able to guarantee payments to these suppliers, without being able to guarantee payments to young people in this country, Mr. Speaker, that are working to be able to supply goods and services to government, then there is no enterprising economy that can be able to go on, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, this conversation should be larger. The idea of physical consolidation should be a larger conversation that we are having both at the county level and at the national level. Because otherwise, that is what ends up bringing a pressure on the national government to keep on adding taxes that sometimes do not make sense uh, in whichever way you think about it. Even the pressure about housing bill that we had, we had here, Mr. Speaker, is all the effort that the government wanted to see how they can be able to solve the housing equation in an area that they don't have their own money to be able to put to be able to solve the issue of, uh, of housing, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, you end up being forcing uh, the common monainchi to go and put their money into this fund because you cannot raise it by yourself. And then it ends up being a tax that's additional to the burden that, we, that the monainchi already has. And, and Mr. Speaker, if we do not solve this issue of expenditure in government, we are still going to have a problem in this debt management strategy. And lastly, Mr. Speaker, as I finish, I want to invite the House, Mr. Speaker, that we must start keeping the National Treasury to account in the data points that it has forwarded to this House with regards to shrinking that debt to GDP ratio. There is desire, of course, that in the, in the, by 2029, they are hoping to reduce it all the way to 55%, Mr. Speaker. They made a commitment of this formula, moving us from a numerical value last year to going to this ratio, uh, uh, this ratio value, Mr. Speaker. But since last year up now, Mr. Speaker, we haven't had an engagement, not at the committee level and not at the house level, where the ministry has come and given us quarterly data in terms of this is how we are going about it. This is the adjustments on our G GDP index projections that we are seeing. And these are the kind of debts that we are taking uh, in terms of concessionary debts that we are taking uh, this particular month uh, in, in such a way that we are sure that we are on track. That is why, Mr. Speaker, last year you saw that by the time we were closing December last year, Mr. Speaker, the debt to, GD, to GDP ratio stood at a higher level than where we found it at 70%, Mr. Speaker, because there is no proper monitoring by this particular House. Therefore, I want to invite the House to pay a lot of attention to uh, the National Treasury figures that has been given in this debt manage manage management strategy in a way that it is a proper oversight and a proper update to this house so that as a house, we can be able to, to tell the country that the number of indices in terms of debt that we're taking from different places can be able to be dealt with. And alongside that, Mr. Speaker, we cannot sit pretty on the idea of Eurobond that was floated the other day, uh, the 1.5 uh, billion Eurobond that was floated the other day, Mr. Speaker, because it did not come as a factor of this debt management strategy. It came as a factor of business cycle in the US where the US government showed an interest to be able to reduce the uh, interest rates on the dollar in the United States. And of course, that 
basically push the markets to be able to adjust. One of the, one of the observations of the committee is that that particular act did bring some confidence to investors to be able to start putting some dollar in our economy and to bolster even tourism in our economy. But it's not a sustainable indication of stability on our foreign exchange and the value of our Kenya shillings. This is something that as a house, again, we must monitor in the next few months and ensure that it does not put us at a danger whereby we keep on borrowing more because we are, we are borrowing against the dollar more and that borrowing against the dollar, should any bump 